How the Sea Urchin Got Its Guts, a tutorial about sea urchin gastrulation. Towers are as high as a three-story house, and they can grow by half a meter a day. An army of sea urchins is mounting an attack. The urchin plague strikes at the kelp's holdfasts, their crucial attachments to the rock. Each urchin has five teeth, which are self-sharpening and are replaced every few months. Beginning from fertilization, our embryo will eventually develop a mouth, stomach, and anus by caving in on itself and squishing through to the other side. Here we see the cell dividing from one into millions. We will follow the development of three kinds of cells, each with its own destiny. These are the destinies, and the three different kinds of cells are mesomeres, micromeres, and macromeres. They will become the skin, the skeleton and muscle, and the gut, respectively. Here we see the micromeres squishing out of the cell wall, beginning their journey towards becoming the skeleton and muscular structure of the cell. They will also help guide the archenteron towards the adjacent wall. Now the philopodia are shooting out of the micromeres. These hair-like structures will go on to become the skeletal and muscular systems of the cell as well as serving their guidance purposes. And this represents the invagination process. The bottom will become the anus, the top the mouth, and the middle the stomach. Here we see it all together now with the, the philopodia rising up to the top and the archenteron doing the same. And remember, things are much messier than they seem with these computer models. Again, three cells, three destinies. The mesomeres in blue to become the skin, the micromeres in red to become the skeletal system, and the macromeres in yellow to become the guts. And this has just been the beginning. The sea urchin has a long life ahead of it, and will go on to be one of the pointiest marvels of the ocean. Ah! 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 Ah!